Hello to all you patriots out there in podcast land and welcome to episode 282 of Canadian Patriot Podcast, the number one live podcast in Canada. We're recording on February the 1st, 2021. Joining me tonight, we have Gavin, Brian, Marty, a special guest we'll get to in a moment. And as always, my name is Andrew and I'll be your host. We'd love to hear your feedback about the show, so please visit CanadianPatriotPodcast.com slash feedback or email us at feedback at CanadianPatriotPodcast.com. Version of the show is available on Stitcher and iTunes. All, All right, right, as always, we help need your out. help. To su- <laughs> <laughs> I, I was working on it, and I, there's just a big lag. Uh, to support Canadian Patriot Podcasts, visit patreon.com slash cpp and become a patreon get a better quality version of the show for just one dollar per episode show that you are not a communist expecting everything you're going to give me for free and buy a cpp t-shirt for just 19.99 plus shipping and theft as uh being modeled here by our uh, poorly chosen model uh visit <laughs> canadianpatriotpodcast.com homepage and follow the link on the right way on the right and I yes. want to uh, thank everybody that's shopping on our Amazon links. Hopefully my new microphone sounds dulcet. And if it doesn't, well, you get what you pay for, I guess. Sorry to our Patreons. I also want to welcome Wade to the show. It's Wade's first time on the podcast. Hi, Wade. It is. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Wade. So Wade's going to be talking to us about uh, some ongoing legal disputes with the government. But uh, first, we're going to do my favorite segment. That's called Where'd My Cursor Go? Because I Can't Scroll. There it is. What are we drinking? (laughs) We're going to go around the screen uh, clockwise. We're going to start with Brian. Uh, Tonight, I'm drinking a Polish beer. I think it's called uh, Leech. I don't know. Not bad. I've had those before. Yeah. All right. Marty, what are you drinking? Uh, Bush. You did not make the sound correct, but I will give it to you anyway. Wade, oh, you having a drink? <laughs> I am. Just a little, uh, I'm trying to be like Gavin, a little Jack and Coke. So, Except mine's not zero. Got to keep those sugar coke. levels up to keep you working away, right? That's right, exactly. High proof corn syrup. Gavin, what are you drinking? Yeah, Wade nailed it. Nailed it uh, Jack and Coke zero. Keeping it real. Good stuff, buddy. Good stuff. I've got some more homebrew. I am working my way through the last of the milk chocolate stout. That was a good one. <laughs> the best homebrew I've ever made. Yeah. It was delicious. All right. If you're not already doing the Patriot Challenge, I want to remind you, if you're a listener, you should be doing five things to make your life better every day. Exercise, practice a skill, read a book, drink some fucking water, and do one thing that'll improve your life. Like If you're on the social media, you grab the template off the website, you check the little box, you post it with your friends. Maybe tell them about the podcast. Have them listen. Yeah. If you have enemies, tell them that they probably don't like you anyway, so it won't hurt your relationship. Yeah, they could All they right. could meet Wade. <laughs> if they're lucky. Well, Wade, Wade is here, and Wade is going to catch us up on some legal goings-ons. Do you want to tell us all about the fun yeah. you're having with the government? Sure. So and you've, I know you've talked to Richard, and you guys have, you're all live with this issue. You know what's going on, but... Um, May 1st, the government took it upon themselves to ban 1,500 plus different models and types of firearms, most of those that this group and many others enjoy peaceably. Oh, can't take um, out my Javelin missile anymore. <laughs> well, that too, or your grenade launcher. But anyway, um, <laughs> my grenade launcher. shortly, allegedly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> government being always really bad at thinking about uh, unintended consequences in this, then realized that, well, they prohibited these guns, but the registered restricted ones had certificates that claimed otherwise. So there became some sort of legal issue. So somehow they had to figure out how they were going to get out of that, it seems. And um, those of you that have restricted versions of those guns probably got a letter in round, round about July 20th telling you that your certificates had been uh, either administratively expired as my, as my um, record show from my privacy request or nullified. Um, and it looked like what a normal revocation notice looked like, looks like, except it was deficient in a, you know, a vast number of ways. Um, under the law, under the law, the way it's stated now, the certificate is valid, except, you know, 
three things happen. It's revoked, that certificate is revoked, and the only person who can revoke it is the registrar. You transfer the firearm, so then the certificate is transferred, or the firearm ceases to be a firearm, so, so you destroy it or whatever. So none of those things happen. Well, I still have them, they haven't been destroyed, so I guess this was a revocation, even though nobody wants to use that word. So this is what brings us to Section 74 challenges. Everybody's heard of them. Essentially, in the Firearms Act Section 72, it gives you the right to challenge any decision made by a government apparchic about the status of your license or your certificates um, or your ATT, things like that, all that sort of bureaucratic nonsense in the Firearms Act. But you have the chance to go in front of a provincial court judge and challenge that, have that hearing, that, that decision reviewed and potentially overturned, stayed, whatever. Uh, it seems they wanted to avoid this. And I mean, we all saw the shenanigans. There's been lots of chatter on all the gun forums, on the social media, in person at the gun clubs everywhere. People have been talking about it. Um, you know, what do we do about this? What is this? Is it a revocation? Is it not? And if it's not, then you don't really have the right to a Section 74 challenge and, and things like that. So it was sort of a controversial thing. The gun orgs, you know, I don't fault, fault the gun orgs that much because for not really getting behind this or understanding it because they were, they're up to their neck in the federal challenge and that's the real battle. And that's where this thing has to be beat down with extreme prejudice. But um, at the same time, it sort of, then it created a vacuum for gun owners like us individuals who still wanted to do something, who still wanted to say, well, the government just can't, not only did they just arbitrarily, you know, take away our stuff or try and take away their stuff, but now they're, not even playing by their own rules in terms of allowing us to have those decisions and those op those actions challenged. So we filed our section 74. Um, it was an individual action. I did it. I talked to other people, most a few other people that I know, um, some guys, you know, like Patrick and Richard, they, all, they also decided to do it. Um, many people didn't because they didn't really know and nobody really knew what to do. Um, luckily, it's 2021 and not 1995 anymore, so it's a little bit harder for the government to just sort of assault us like that and not have us have resources. We have social networks, all that sort of stuff. So you can reach out, and there were some people on the various forums, Gun Nuts and Reddit and that, that seemed to know what they were talking about. So I started reaching out, and the other people were reaching out, and we're able to connect with a group of about, I think there's about 50 of us in the group now, and everybody in this group, the only thing that binds us to this group is that you have an active section 74 challenge ongoing well some or you did at the time we formed the group because some have since had theirs dismissed um so that's where we are today we've we've been sort of we've a group of us a group of our group or part of our group in calgary had some success in december where the provincial court judge hearing there heard nine hearings there and ruled I do have jurisdiction, stop this nonsense. So another part of the group in Edmonton were expecting a very similar thing. Alberta seems to have their shit together on the, on, in the judiciary. Uh, in the Maritimes, we haven't been so lucky. We've had a couple dismissals. In Ontario, we've had a couple dismissals. One was just two weeks ago, and that was Richard, who you had on your show a month ago. So and another one was George, who's in our group, and he's up in Sudbury. And George's judge was a little bit more sympathetic, but he fell for the argument that the attorney general is playing that this is not, they can't, we can't challenge this because this is not the registrar making a decision. The registrar's hands were tied. This was because of the governor and council made this, changed the regulations and made these guns prohibited. So she, the registrar, Susan, Suzanne Eaton, had no choice but to nullify our certificate. The only problem with the operation, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I thought I heard somebody nope. say something. Okay. I mean, I have so, a yeah, lot let... of questions, but oh, yeah, I, so... I want to... Okay, you want me to finish and then we can do. Okay, so... Um, you know... <laughs> so, so operation of law. The only challenge with operation of law is that you have to actually sow the law. So that's, that's a, certainly a valid reason to revoke. Like, say, Gavin, you go out and rob a bank, but you get convicted of bank robbery. Well, guess what? Under the law, you're not allowed to own firearms anymore. So okay, the so registrar still has to... Right. She still has to revoke it, but in the revocation, she can indicate, well, guess what, Gavin, you've got under section this, 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 and this, you've got convictions. So under section, you can't own them. Yeah. 
as per right? yeah, this code, you have violated the agreements of that. Exactly. Therefore, we are legally allowed to revoke your certificate. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. operation by law. So if the OIC didn't mention anything about certificates, certainly didn't mention this word nullification. The Firearms Act is silent. The criminal code is silent on it. So if it's operation by law, show us the law. Well, they can't, but we never get to that part. It seems we're self-represented applicants for the right for the most part. And we're dealing with lawyers. Now they're government lawyers, but they're still lawyers. This is their tennis court. And they're killing us on procedure, right? Facts, they can't, they can't compete. But on procedure, they know all the ins and outs and they're beating the shit out of us, quite frankly, which is this is how they're getting it. They're getting the judges, especially in Ontario and the East Coast, turned around into this whole concept. Well, it's a federal thing. I'm only a provincial court judge. You need to go to federal court. I mean, Section 75 of the Firearms Act says very clearly, if I pay the reference on set under seven, Section 72, as outlined in 74, boom, the provincial court just must set a date and have a hearing. But again, we're not able to get to that point because there's so much procedural stuff that they're throwing at us. And you know, we're getting, I'm getting, I get a courier on Monday last week for a, a stack of papers. It was this big and it's all Gilbert Gook in it is, it's, it's like four lines that I need to know about my hearing tomorrow, right? That's it. Uh, but that's how they're killing us, right? So I can't, you know, I'm just a single guy. So, um, what, but what, so what we finally decided to do this group that I'm working with, where we're trying to coordinate in the different regions and make, we've got George up in Sudbury and Richard in St. Thomas, who just got appealed and they got um, uh, dismissed for very weird reason. Like the judge in, in Sudbury told, seemed very sympathetic, but told George, you have a, this is a constitutional issue. You need to go to federal court and fight it on a constitutional ground. Well, okay, well, $200,000 later, but I can't do anything for you. I don't have jurisdiction. So we thought, okay, we need to appeal that. And then when Richards happened, Richard went into the judge and the judge actually started out fairly okay but he had clearly had a bad day and at some point Richard asked about well when we get to my hearing am I allowed to bring in evidence the crown jumped in and started on this whole procedural thing next thing we knew the judge was admonishing Richard for wasting the court's time when he has serious issues to deal with and you're dismissed I don't have jurisdiction so I mean right there we knew it that's it we've got to we've got to stop this we got to put a stop to this once and for all. So the only way to do that is to get a ruling in the superior court that says the Ontario Court of Justice, the lower court where we're fighting this, absolutely has jurisdiction. It must stop. So that's what we thought. Well, who are we going to get? And um, Cam, who's Cameron, who's uh, sort of our our spirit guide in this, has been talking to Ed Berlu and a few other lawyers. And Ed said, "I can win this. I've done over a hundred of these. I can win this. Let me do your appeal." The only problem is that's pretty expensive. Appeals it can be expensive. So also a little busy the, as well at the moment, I imagine. <laughs> well, he's actually the. That's what we were worried about. Like, uh, you know, are you, you know, we're going to pay you this big chunk of money, and where's your focus going to be? We know where we want you to be. Yeah. And he said, you know, the submissions and all that are done. The injunction hearing's done for him. The, the there's just a big gap now until they get into some of the smaller hearings, which won't happen for a few months. So he said, I've got time. I can do this. I've got bandwidth. Okay, we'll take it. So that brings us to why I reached out to you guys, because we have um, set up a GoFundMe to help us pay for this. I mean, we're all going to kick in what we can, but um, we also need some, we need some help. And so far, it's been up for a couple of weeks now, and the community has been pretty, uh, pretty awesome. We've got, we've reached about halfway to where we need to get, we feel. And um, so we're at about 11,000. We figure we should be about 22.5, should cover both appeals and potentially set us up where uh, if they, because we assume they might want to appeal it to the appeals court if the superior court. So we may have to start this over again. So we're starting, we're hoping we don't have to, but we think we're in pretty good shape if we can reach that goal on the GoFundMe. And of course, anything extra will just kick into the federal challenges because that's where the real battle needs to happen. So, so is that uh, that's fairly, a I know background. I blew, blew I blew through that really quickly, but yeah. That's okay. No, that's that's good. That's, that's what she said. So, um. Hey, <laughs> that's three minutes of her day, plus cuddling, including cuddling. Either way. Yeah, um, two and a half minutes of that, yeah. 
let's let's talk about the GoFundMe, and then I I have legal questions. Sure. So re- remind everybody the goal for the GoFundMe. How much money are we trying to get to? We're looking to get to twenty two five, twenty two thousand five hundred, and All we're right. and just we're... a shade above eleven thousand now. All right. So there's a link in the show notes. Yep. I'll put it probably on the homepage for CPP. But if you go to CanadianPatriotPodcast.com slash CPP 282, that's today's episode, you get to the show notes. If you're on your podcatcher app, your iTunes or podcast addict or what have you on your phone, it'll be in the show notes on that. If you're on anything else i don't know because i don't know how it works but i, I can the uh, podcast this week i can i can push it out on the uh the book of faces through our various Perfect. apparatus that would be awesome, be awesome. Yeah. so we'll get yeah, I mean, anybody, anybody, anybody listening it's like uh it's www.gofundme.com uh, and, uh, and slash 74 appeals that's right yeah it comes right up it's the only one <clears throat> yeah sweet so, yeah, yeah, so if you're eager to give us your money and you can't wait, then do it right now. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> well, get on it. Uh, <laughs> I say that humbly, of course. Let's watch that number. <laughs> that, yeah, let's watch that number climb higher as we do this live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do it it's nice to see some of the people that are some of the names here that have donated, like uh, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau and yeah. uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bill Blair has donated towards oh, you guys. Wow. So it's really, it's really <laughs> is there are there any donations from uh, Idris Elba on there? Um, <laughs> No, he he got uh, Sophie took his. I had to scroll through all of the list, but maybe may, he might be on here somewhere. Yeah. Murray Smith is on there as well. I noticed the other day, which I thought was yeah. clever too. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> trolls on the internet, good times. Yeah. All right, so if you are interested in donating, go find me. Search for S seventy four. It's the only thing that comes up under that. Or links in the show notes. I'll put a link on the homepage on CanadianPatriotPodcast.com. Gavin's going to take care of our social media. So we'll get that out to people and we'll try and get you some money, some more money. Awesome. Because awesome. Uh, having worked with uh, Mr. Burlew, I understand that he is not a cheap person to work with. No. I get And that. one of the reasons why, if I can just say, one of the reasons why this is really important is because um, if they get away with this, this time being able to use all these sort of legal trickery and chicanery yeah. to get out of being held accountable to their own decisions, it's pretty much the end of section of section 74 challenges for anything, right? So, or yeah. like for license refusals or well, uh, ATT I mean, refusals or anything. So, it, it, I mean, it'll, and it'll eventually, you know, stem into other things that are not firearms related as well, because they've learned Always from does. what they've done this into something else. And once we don't have any guns Always left, does. they'll they'll still have that tactic in their back pocket to be like, oh, you know, procedural, you know, this, that, whatever, right? They, 20 seconds, flagrant. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's not IDPA <laughs> rules or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Flag- I, you muzzle two people one no, time. This, and... is, this is important. <laughs> That's definitely it's, a flag. It's important because there's there's very few, uh, you know, there's there's very few rights accorded to firearms owners. This is one of the, the you know, this is basically the only mechanism that we have to actually, uh, you know, to fight for anything in the Firearms yeah. Act as firearms owners. And they're trying to take this away. And they're trying yeah. to take this away through essentially you know shafakery just yeah yeah. you know trying to reword things trying to make things up as they go um obfuscation and you know like i get i i and i appreciate that you guys recognize that this isn't the main fight but at the same time they can't be allowed to just get away with this without a fight so it's it's an important it's while it's not the main fight it's an important battle yeah for sure you gotta exercise try to exercise all the tools the toolbox like everything you have yeah well and i mean there could be some potentially That's exactly important our stuff yeah, yeah. That, that comes out of this that could be used in the big main trials that that's a precedent with this or sets like a yeah you, know, you, a can, detail, learn, you something. can definitely learn from it right you can definitely learn from it well and if you know if they're well if you call them on this and they have to follow the law then that sets the precedent that like hey this is the law you have to do things according to the law which is what they set out then, you know, come the main trial when they go and say, well, did you follow this? Well, no. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, you have to, right? It, yeah, good faith. Good faith is a is a thing. 
that judges yeah. will consider as well. Like if they see yeah. that they are not, you know, that they are not arguing good faith, that they're not acting in good faith and, and, and intentionally trying to, to weasel around the law and try to obfuscate and try to screw people over, you know, judges will look at that and, and act accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you happen to have a judge that owned an AR-15. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we like haven't found him yet. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So walk, walk me through the, some of the more technical I feel like all, there, Wade. all the best judging occurs with an AR-15. But... Yes. Or 1911. <laughs> Single action. Uh, cold be like a Colt Combat yeah. Commander in Chrome, though, because it's very. Yeah. yeah. So it had to be something that was the... presented to somebody. <laughs> walk me through a little bit of the technical yeah, stuff sure. there, Wade. So you've mentioned a couple of different levels of court. And you'll you'll forgive me. I'm a little bit rusty on right. my on my high school civics class. <laughs> so you're dealing with the provincial court, but not the, the superior court, court, which is also a provincial court. And there's Correct. also a chance to hit the provincial appeals court. Correct. So the first level, the the level, the lowest level court in Ontario, in any province in Ontario, it's called the Ontario Court of Justice. But it's your basic court that of justice. That would be a silly name to call it in New Brunswick. I I, I see why it's pre- right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it would be the New Brunswick Court of Justice or something similar. The convention will be similar. Be the court. It's where your base level criminal trials are held, and pretty much nothing else. Right. Um, which has also been an experience because I've gone to hearings and the judges, they don't, they don't see many of these things. So they don't really have a clue. Um, and so you're the accused and no, I'm, and you have to point out to them and you almost have to be indignant. Sometimes I'm not accused of anything. So stop calling me yeah. the accused. Right. But yeah. Um, but I think that's an important distinction in this because absolutely it's different. If you were going and challenging it because you've actually been accused of something right. like murder but well, like, and I mean, even you, the court dockets, it. even the court dockets will say, "Attorney General of Canada, Registrar of Firearms versus Wade Van," and it's like, "No, you've got that wrong. I'm the applicant; they're the respondent. It's yeah. Wade Vanny versus them, right?" So, but we you, we have to be picky with that because um, you know that yeah. that's going to change a judge's demeanor too. Because you know, in one case, uh, of, of one of the one of our guys who is a uh, you know, 25 year veteran of the forces and he's, he's an officer in the forces and he's there. He, he, I'm not your typical dirtbag. I've been serving this country faithfully for decades, you know, so, and the judge was very deferent to that. And it, so it changes that, that tone and it forces the um, respondent, the AGC to at least play a little more decently because now the judge is a little bit more sympathetic to us. Whereas you know, if I'm some dirtbag drug dealer or bank robber yeah. or something, then whatever, right? Yeah. But so yeah, so that's the three. And then after the Ontario Court of Justice, Andrew, it's Superior Court, and then there is the Ontario Court of Appeals, and then beyond that, if it goes beyond that, it has to go to the Supreme Court. So Which have I don't think anybody any of these get are to going. an appeals court yet. No, this will be the um, this will be the. Uh, so the, the successful wins in the Alberta Court of Justice are being appealed by the Attorney General to go to, and so that'll be go to Alberta Court of Queen's Bench. That's what their Superior Court's called. And then us taking this to the Ontario Superior Court to appeal the Ontario Court of Justice rulings, that'll be, the, these will be the two first times any, any uh, that so these particular on, like, ones, there, there have been... There have been Section 74 reviews that have made it to Superior Court or even Appeals Court before, but not, but not for this. this yeah. Not for this particular. Or, issue. I shouldn't say case because that's a, but not for this. Yeah, issues are good. The, the non-revocation yeah. notice. Yeah, and the reason for that is I filed my thing on July 28th. It was October 5th before I even saw had my first hearing, and it'll be May 28th when my preliminary hearing for jurisdiction is actually held based on the wow. schedule that I'm going in tomorrow to us to so stamp. you're so, not <laughs> quite a year for this process and i'm not even where i need to be yeah exactly this is the courts move like molasses yeah i'm not a legal expert by any uh, any measure but i do play one on the internet don't we have to let the dirt bags out of jail if we don't give them a reasonable trial like doesn't well yeah administration of justice needs to occur in a timely fashion 
Yeah, the Jordan yeah. principle, but that is actually one of the reasons why these types of matters take such little precedent. So, um, not to throw shade, but you remember when this start, you may remember when this all started um, in the early days of fall when the Rod yeah, the the, came out and said, "We don't want to be responsible for doing." You yeah, know, throwing we're not going to tell you not to do this, but yeah. also be considerate that yeah, actual right. dirt bags well, might yeah. Yeah, well. I think that it's probably safe to, that was probably, he probably shouldn't have said that because I think that threw a lot of cold water on people that were willing to do it. And the fact just yeah. is that no criminal, any, any crown attorney court, um, court trial coordinator or judge that's going to prioritize a reference hearing for a firearms act decision over a child molester or a rapist or murderer doesn't deserve to be have that job. I don't think that happens. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless they, they plan uh, to just take justice into their own hands, then I fully yeah, well, support okay. that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Every level of politician and government appointee that they probably don't deserve to have that job, but that's yeah. a different topic for a different yeah. podcast. So, but realistically, Wade, that's well said, and I agree with you on that point for sure. Yeah, I mean, like when when he said that, I mean, we we called it out on the podcast and said, you know, like we understand their position and that, you know, they can't necessarily support it because if Topics. that happens, it makes it look bad. And, and we yeah. get that. But also, yeah, that seems yeah. to not be happening. So it's not a concern. So if that's why you weren't doing this, you should probably yeah. just, you know, get on it. Well, and yeah. then donate money to the GoFundMe. Or anybody who's interested now. Technically, there's no time frame because the government didn't even follow their own procedure. So their own rules around time frame. Yeah, have you, been you'd be well within basically. your rights to say to say to a judge if he says, "Why did you wait so late to file?" Well, you know what, Your Honor, I didn't. I believed them when they told me it wasn't right. Yeah. But now I've seen so much. I've had so much information, a chance to understand what's going on. I've seen the injunction hearing, all that sort of stuff. You know, the lies and everything, or the mistruths and stuff. Now I think that they probably aren't telling the truth and I want to make sure I file. And yeah, I bet you most judges will accept that because, <laughs> you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's, you know, there is a procedure that, that is, you know, there is a revocation procedure and, you know, there's you know, specifications about what it needs to include and what it needs to say. And yeah. uh, they didn't follow that. And so, yes, right. as part of the revocation, you also, you know, there's a time limit as to when, uh, how long do you have to file but if they haven't followed the procedure, then you should not be bound by the procedure. That's and right. That's kind of the argument you can make is, is that you know, they did not follow the procedure. They did not include, you know, the, the notification of how to file. I didn't realize this was a revocation because it was missing the documents <clears throat> required for revocation. And therefore I shouldn't be, uh, you know, I shouldn't be held to the, the time limit to file. Yeah, I'd even go one step further, Marty. They actually lied when we said, is this a revocation? No, it's not. If you check the RCMP website yeah. to this day, at least the last time I checked a few days ago when I was talking about this with somebody else, it still says, wasn't a revocation. So yeah. if a judge, now a judge in Alberta has ruled, another judge in Alberta is probably about to rule the same thing. If we can get the Ontario court to, to rule that, okay, this is actually a revocation and the Ontario court does have, does have jurisdiction. When that ruling came down in Alberta, they went from like 50 or 60 province wide to 120, 130. There was a hearing in Leduc a week or two ago in the courtroom in Leduc had to shut down their Zoom and uh, open up a whole bunch of new lines because they had so many uh, applicants on the phone, which is awesome, right? No, that's great news. So, that, that's great yeah. news. To, to double like that, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, if anybody wants to do it and they don't know how, and this goes for you guys or anybody listening, uh, send an email to s74 chat uh, s74 process at gmail.com and we'll hook you up it's a single form in most provinces to get started and then you've got lots and lots of time to figure out what you're going to do about it and essentially a couple of the, the judge in alberta essentially wrote your jurisdiction argument for you so <laughs> okay i'll put a link to that in the email or i'll put a link to that email in the show notes as well so that's S74 process at gmail.com. All one word, yep, no special absolutely. characters. All one words, all right. lowercase. Yeah. So we'll we'll put that in the show notes for people. And then awesome. uh, I'm going to be copy and pasting that into my email in a moment. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, I mean, why not at this point? I think like if it's if it's one piece of paper yeah. and uh we have somebody like Mr. Burley on board, has anyone 
to your knowledge, anybody that's been involved in this, because I think we have around uh, prior to this giant jump in Alberta, we had about a hundred odd of these cases. Well, we know of at least, so the number keeps going up every time we, every time somebody goes to, to goes to one of these hearings, whoever is representing from the attorney general, you know, will mention to the judge, we have X number across Canada. We're trying to get them case managed, all this sort of blah, blah, blah. And the last number we're right at, we probably approaching 200 now that we know of, but they've been trickling in steady court. My, I don't think mine, I, even though I filed in July, I don't even think mine made it to the registrar until uh, probably no, oct late October or November, because there was, I went to two or three hearings with nobody was there. Only the provincial crown was there. There was no federal crown and the federal crown doesn't have a clue what this is about, right? Cause this is, or the provincial crown doesn't. So the AGC has to send somebody, the registrar would send somebody from department of justice, somebody from the attorney general's office to come to this hearing to speak to it. So they just kept kicking it down the road until some, did you serve them? Yes, I did. did you know, the court did as well. Actually the court served them for me. I didn't even have to. Right. So it was, I just filled out the one form. Uh, dropped it off, had to go uh, put on my mask in, in the summer in uh, September there and go down and pick up my new my form that had my dates and my Zoom info and everything's been by Zoom since then. So yeah. Seems pretty straightforward. I mean I think quite the government don't even have to put on pants. It's amazing. That's right. Ain't no That's compliance right. like malicious <laughs> compliance. Although yeah. it's funny you see some of these people, some of the dirt bags that show up for these hearings. So and you see them in there and then just Sitting there, and the judge is admonishing one guy for smoking in court. He's sitting in his living and can't even smoke while he's waiting. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, wait, I was gonna say, like, smoking in court, what is this trailer park voice? It's like, for like, reiki? don't give her, like, you're in your Your're own living room, so like, in court. <laughs> you should be yeah. able to do whatever you want. However, also, yeah. like, optics are kind of a thing, so like, exactly. I don't know, maybe don't be a good moron, yeah. Yeah, if you got your, uh, you know, you got your uh, fuck the police t-shirt on while you're sitting there, uh, you know, yeah. it's probably like a bad that idea. Be... Yeah, yeah. Somebody, can, under somebody, your can, dart, somebody shirt, can dart yeah. in their own room, in their own house if they want to. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you would think, too, because they're like, they're so stressed out, they're in court, and they're like, oh, I can have a Agreed. dart like you, at my you, own house. <laughs> you should be able to, but <laughs> just because you can do something, front. yeah, doesn't mean you yeah. should do something, right? Like, well, it, it's... Yeah. Put on a shirt and tie if you got right, one, and sir. look professional. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't even have to wear pants. Just put the shirt and tie on. Yeah, as long as yeah, from like the, you know the the waist up, you look presentable. You're good. Yeah, right. you can Maybe. turn off your 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 camera feed while you're smoking. Out yeah, there. you could you could do do that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah now I'm having internet problems. <laughs> yeah. Not enough Not bandwidth. The, uh... just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So has anybody you said a lot of people are self-representing has anybody gone through this with There's a professional a couple, couple of guys are so one of the rulings in calgary and one of the reasons i think we want we did so well in calgary is the uh the one ruling was there were nine hearings being held in front of the same judge and the first guy stark ryan stark hired greg dunn in calgary who is an awesome lawyer, a criminal defense and firearms lawyer. He's awesome. I mean, I think he's, you know, um, I think Ian Runkel looks up to him as a hero. Michael Wilberg, all these guys, they sort of look up to Greg Dunn as this awesome guy. And he went in and he didn't even make any submissions. He just argued it orally. And a couple of the guys that are in our group that were in that group or that were in that group said they just got up and said when it was their turn. So he finished his and then it was, you know, so Ben goes to get up and this is what he said. Right, and <laughs> just sort of rode the, uh, and they well, all had favorable rulings, right? And uh, <laughs> we know Ian Runkle. I don't know if you know who he is. He's uh, fairly prominent. Yeah, he's got a, the, uh, he's got a little story. YouTube channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh, yeah. he's doing his. Um, so he's somebody we're in contact with fairly regularly, and he's given us. But he's doing his own case, and he just did his hearing a couple of weeks ago in Edmonton. So that's uh, there. And there's a group of our guys in there with him. So we're hoping that that's the, but he, he is advising you as well. Uh, well, as much as he can without, you know, like he, he can't really officially become our advisor because he technically is a, uh, an employee of the government of Alberta through legal aid. I see. But he, um, but yeah, he we run suggestions. stuff by him. Yeah. We, we, you know, we can run stuff by him. Hey, what do you, is this got legs? And you know, he'll tell us, 
yay or nay, yeah. right? And so that helps. But yeah, so there's a couple, and and we try and borrow heavily from the guys who have gotten lawyers as much as possible, and they're sharing as freely as they obviously can. Um, but so it's weird what happens when a group of people come together to work on a common goal. Yeah. It's like some sort of weird Absolutely. sense of community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woods are getting well, built, guys. And I think it's, I think the, the big thing is too, is like I was saying earlier, it's 2021 and not 1995. I think if C68 and C17 and all that bullshit that happened in the late eighties, early nineties came along now, I think it would be a big, a bit different story. And I, you know, I'm sort of. Oh yeah. Like if I had because, a machine gun right now and, and I could fight it with my friends on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I definitely would want to hold on to that. On the internet. <laughs> yeah. I, Never mind magazine restrictions. That's yeah. Right. yeah. No, I, I agree that the, the, the technological advances that we've got have certainly helped us band together and share information and, and best practices and all of that for, for many things, which is great. Yeah. It also the downside seem, is... It, it also does seem to be biting everybody in the ass right now, though, because everybody's yeah, locked down or sh- shadow banned or whatever. That must be a, must be a sign it's yeah. working. Yeah. I mean, the downside is, is that, you know, the, these instances, the crown can also, you know, refer to video recordings of things and catch this and that and everything else. But, you know, I think it, for something like this, it definitely plays more into our favor than to anyone else's and we should utilize it whenever possible. And Yeah. Well, you know, if you've got the money to get a, to get a lawyer and you can share that information with the other people that have lawyers and just the other people will, will learn. Cause yeah, all we need is a, like, Someone losing this isn't a bad thing. It's not going to no. hurt us, but somebody winning is a big thing. Right. For all of us. Right. And originally when we started talking about the strategy, when, there, when a few of us had sort of networked together and we were starting talking and we had these grand visions, well, wow, you know what? They sent out about 70,000 of those notices. Imagine if we had seven or 8,000 people that filed this thing. Like we would, somebody in... Um, in government, particularly probably the person sitting in the registrar's office, would insist yeah. that something needed to get done. And we might have had a solution that was more political than actual legal in that sense. It might have just taken care of itself. Um, got I mean, kind of back. like uh, in, in Italy recently, when all the stores just decided to open and the government retracted all of their restrictions? Yeah. Yep. I'm reminded back in 1995 <laughs> or 97 when they... Uh, when the first fire, when the firearms act came in, and the uh, deadline for having your handgun registered, your what was going to be net your prohibited handgun registered came and went, and people were still it didn't come into force. Whatever something happened, there was that glitch, and the people kept getting buying new guns and new guns, and there was about a thousand of these or twelve hundred people who. Uh, ended up getting guns that they shouldn't have technically been allowed to buy. And in 97, the government has, whoa, whoa, stop. Okay. And they said, that's it. You have to give them back to us. And 200 and some people filed out of that 1,200. So about, you know, one sixth filed section 74 reference. They know you're not taking my gun. I'm keeping this. You can't revoke my certificate. And they just changed the law. They moved the date. They said, okay, fine. The date's here. So those 200 people got to keep their gun. And the other thousand or so had to, because they didn't fight it, had to give them back. But it was 200 people and the government just said, ah, it's easier, just we'll change the date to the last date from this guy and we're good. Right? <laughs> so we were sort of envisioning maybe if we got something like that. Now, obviously, we fell far short of that goal. But um, we bet. Yeah. But nonetheless, you know, we're still, I think, I think to Gavin's point, losing this, somebody said, you know, while well, you create a precedent, well, there's no precedent created from a, uh, losing a reference hearing that's going to impact the federal challenges or anybody's guns other than the person who's doing the challenge. Um, but a win is going to be massive for everybody because it means, again, like we talked about, if you make the rules, that's one thing, but you have to hold yourself at, you, at least to the rules. Well, yeah. Right? If, you, I, you if you're going to make them, you're the one at the very least that has to follow them, right? Like, that's how that works. That's right. Or how it should work. It doesn't seem to, but that's how it should work. So. Oh. That's what we're trying for here. Yeah. 
There's uh, Chris on YouTube mentioned that he filed his in August and he has yet to hear from them. Is there a way if anybody's filed, if they're one of our many tens of listeners, that they can <laughs> check the status of their filing? Um, I would uh, I would just um, ask them to check with the court or to confirm that they have, in fact, served the registrar. There were cases we've seen where the courts Technically, according to the form and according to the process, the court should be serving the registrar. But at this point, I would take your um, take your original, however you filed. If you filed in person, you have a stamp or whatever. Take that document, take a photocopy of it, and send that to the registrar's office. Look them up. Um, Suzanne Easton is her name. She it's mail stop. All I could. 73 Lake and Drive, Ottawa, mail stop. I can't remember the exact, but it's online. If you go to the Canadian Firearms Program website, they'll have the address there. And mail it to them, registered mail. Then they've got proof or fax it to them. If you can go back to 1993 and find a fax machine, fax it to them because all government offices have a fax machine, right? So They probably still have beavers too, yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? So, And then that way, at least you say, if you've got a registered, you've served them. And that's probably what the problem is. The problem is the court has probably somehow COVID hasn't helped anything because it's an excuse to just completely stop doing stuff. Right. So. Yeah. No, no, it's never. Not. never. <laughs> yeah. Can confirm that across many industries. Order something yeah. and it didn't show up. Hey, hey, it's COVID, buddy. Take what, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> People are dying, Brian, and all yeah. you care about is uh, your stuff. I'm sorry. You need our I'm delivery so sorry. standards right now because of COVID. That's yeah. Okay, no, it's that's, like that's, you guys yeah, had so. no problem taking my money though. Uh, so yeah, yeah uh, exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's good information. So if you if you filed one of these and you haven't heard anything. Serve them yourselves, so at least you know. Yeah. Check with the check with the courts. Um, again, I'm not sure how Chris filed, but I filed uh, by email. He says email. he did That's it through it email. Yeah, he said he yeah. did his through so, email. So follow up with them, but also um, send uh, send whatever you can to the uh, the registrar as well. But file them Good directly. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I, I got to do that. I, I filed mine by email with my local court forever ago and I haven't heard anything. And, you know, I, I the, well, pay, some pay homage to, them, right? to, to Jocko. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not that I um, haven't had the motivation. I guess I just haven't had the discipline to follow up on it. And I really should do that. If not, I will just file again. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of courts were too. Toronto East wasn't even accepting them. New Brunswick still hasn't accepted them. There's a form in New Brunswick you need that the court has to give you. And they won't, they're not giving. They've the, Some court clerk apparently has taken it upon herself to decide that no, it's not It's not reviewable because it's from the federal government. So, Weird. Like, yeah. Clerk is now deciding law? Yeah, so um, I'm not sure if the, how that's going to get resolved, if it's going to get resolved, but uh, uh, somebody's, somebody's sure going to have to go to yeah. lawyer up for that. Yeah, someone's going to lose a job, though, I'm sure. I'm okay with that. Well, I maybe can't not. imagine that in this day and age that there's not like an electronic copy that you have, and you have to actually talk to a real human being to get a paper form so the court, like, it just blows my mind that that's a thing. The problem is, is that you're forgetting it's government. Yeah, right. well, and it's, he also it's the it most incompetent, so. least efficient way possible yeah. they have to do this. I, I know, filed in triplicate, lost in soft peat, turned into we'll fire. Some kind of then... AI that's yeah. not efficient that eventually leads you to a human. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it, it baffles me that that's the. So Why does it still we, take weeks to transfer a, a certificate? It, it can all be done automatically, instantly. Yes. I know. I know. I'm trying to apply logic to a logical situation. I get that. Yeah, it's government. It's, you know it's fucked from the get-go. It's just like... Exactly. Don't approach it from a logical yeah. standpoint. You gotta... Yeah. What's the worst way that we could do this? Yeah, yeah let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you think they're making a decision. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason yeah, the, they still have fax machines. <laughs> we turn the light out when we when we leave the house so we don't have to pay extra hydro. That's the, how we think. <laughs> they don't think like that. <laughs> well, 
partly because we're paying their we should, hydro, but <laughs> is there anything else we should be covering with this aside from paying their bills? I feel like we got a pretty clear yeah. email yeah. people that know what they're doing. We've got an email s74 process yeah. at gmail.com. Give Wade money, not just Wade, but give GoFundMe yeah. money. Although you can uh, um, give, visit Wade's OnlyFans yeah. to give him money give, directly. Give the GoFundMe money and any extra you have, I'm willing to take too. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OnlyFans.com slash awesome beer. cause money. That sounds better. There, there you go. Wade's righteous cause. I Wait. should get a t shirt. That yeah. sounds much better because it is righteous. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff. It, it really is. So, in order to do this, you've got to file. One form, unless you're in Nova Scotia, then it's two forms that you can't get both of. Well, New Brunswick is New Brunswick won't take the form. Uh, if you need to file in, in uh, they'll in give Ontario. it to you. With the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. Well, in Ont- so New, Nova Scotia was one form. We have a couple of guys, and we have some people in Nova Scotia that are in our group, so they can certainly walk you through the process if you're close. Send me and send us an email at s74process at gmail. We'll hook you up with people. We got people in Alberta, BC um ontario uh saskatchewan i don't think we have anybody in quebec yet um but we're talking to them and i don't think we have anybody in Manitoba, but we're talking to them too so uh and newfoundland so we can pretty much cover you in every province except for new brunswick because for whatever reason new brunswick has decided they're just not going to participate in this whole experiment called democracy so <laughs> i've got a solution for that I think we all do, but yeah. Yeah, they took the my guns away, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you still do have them, technically. Yeah, they didn't oh, yeah, do a very good job of that either. Yeah. When you think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, very low T confiscation. <laughs> They're still in You're... your possession, Wade. Yes, You're not that's allowed true. To do anything with these? Okay, yeah, but they're like I still physically have them though. Yeah. So yeah. what? Yeah. Man? I can still look well, at them. Uh... Touch them. Yeah. So I have my uh, After guns the sort of separated council, everybody was safe, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. But I have my guns sort of separated to use and I have so I have my guns I use for competition sort of in here and in this cabinet or in this safe. I've got a cabinet for hunting stuff. Wait, and then I've got please don't tell me you have an order and council. I have You have I an have, order and council safe? Are you serious? I have a prohibited a prohibited <laughs> cabinet now, yes. <laughs> I uh I kind of do too. That, that's crazy. You shouldn't but, have that because it would be such a de- depressing safe to go to. Well, so I, I'm in I'm in the same boat as Wade in that I have that too, except that it was just that was the safe that had my modern guns in it. Yeah, and they just happened uh, to it, they were already in there, and then they made them prohibited. So it was like. Well, this is now my prohibited safe. Guys, so you got to mix them the up. Ladies. You got to put them with guys. Yeah. Go, no, you got to put them in with ones that go outside so they can talk to them and make them remember what. Oh, they'll like. get jealous. Yeah. <laughs> well, the fun, Brian. The fun, Brian, is though, is checking the FRT and moving them around. Oh, that. exactly. Yeah, it's you like never, a game. You never know, right? I don't so, know. Like, Wait, right. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that because it's come out officially from you know. Government of Canada lawyers, the FRT is opinion only and not binding. Oh, that's law. right. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So those ones can get moved back out of the safe and into there the other go. safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, what's interesting is uh, it's been a while since uh, I did my PAL course and I don't own any other than the OIC prohibited. Don't <laughs> prohibited uh, firearms have different storage requirements? Yes, but. <laughs> Yeah, so, like, exactly they right. created these as prohibited, but then they just put in the letter, the revocation letter, but you can just store these the way you cur- they currently well, I, were for their and, previous status. Which is something I've always found funny, and I think I've mentioned it before. So, my uh, alleged grenade launcher that I have uh, was <laughs> not even considered a firearm previously and didn't need a license to purchase it, and therefore it didn't need to be trigger locked or locked up in any manner whatsoever. And could literally just sit in the corner of my closet with a grenade next to it. So now, so now it's so dangerous that it has to be taken away from me, but I can still just keep it sitting there in the corner of my closet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm just finding like, like this is sort of a weird gray area where like they've classified yeah. them as prohibited. So per the Firearms Act, they must be stored in a certain manner. But there's you have a letter that's completely unofficial, not per the law in any way that just says, but you can store it. You know, in in, a, in alternate way than the law says. 
Well, I mean, it Ooh, goes along I with can, Blair and allow tweets, me to right? Blow your mind. Allow me to blow your mind. I changed the barrel configurations of a number of my prohibited firearms immediately following or immediately prior to the order in council, depending on which firearm it was. I will not be issued new certificates. Yes. I've also seen so some I interesting have... things where people have now finally, like almost a year later, received a thing saying, hey, we need to update the thing that you talked about. Yep. No, I I am not one of those. So I, I changed. I was in the process of changing my service rifle rifle when the OIC came out. Like I literally just put a new barrel on my service rifle rifle. And I called like the day that the order in council came out and they're like, yeah, no, we're not, we're just not giving you a new, like I called yeah. that morning. They're like, we're not giving you a new certificate. I'm like, but I just changed the bear. I have 30 days to do, like, I need to do this. This is my, like, this thing's yeah. going out to the range in a couple of days. I got a zero for service rifle. And they're like, yeah, no, we're just not giving you a certificate. Good, good luck. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The, the beauty part of that is though, is by nullifying then that, so now you don't have to report any changes, right? Which, which is weird this... because to me, when you say that you've nullified hill, something, it means that you're basically <laughs> going to destroy those, right? Like, you, so all well, of our certificates are nullified. So they all went into the shredder or got burned. Yeah. Right. So they're all gone. Right. So here's the best part. The OIC is overturned, which I mean, eventually it's going to be right. Cause it, we all know it's bullshit and illegal. But ah, uh, that could take five years. Right. Yeah. But that could take five years or so, seven years, who knows, right? At that point, then they come back to us and say, and assuming they don't write legislation to fix it, because, you know, but anyway, they come back to us at that point and say, okay, so these guns, yeah, okay, they're not prohibited, they're restricted. So um, this information is several years out of date. Can you re register? No, I'm not re registering anything. They've, they are unregistered. You nullified it. Why do I need to? <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. That's on you, bro. I, I do, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, what I are. Think things, <laughs> and things are going to get really interesting in a couple months here because the grace period is about to expire. That's uh, uh, still a year away. It's 2022. It's a year away? 2020. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But I thought, I thought rate, it was this year. Four, 14 but more You're months. not wrong, though, Marty. Yeah. That the, way, the rate the court's moving, it's going to be after May before the he hearing proper starts. Because they've got a number of more, two hearings and stuff like that. Where, well, know, I mean, they. Yet. I was more or, talking about in terms of the legislation that needs to be done before. Oh, yeah. before well, I mean, that's the, you know we're we're almost a year into this, so we're almost halfway through this now at this point, and or very close to. And they, not that long ago, have just taken on IBM as the person that's going to plan the confiscation. So that means they didn't have a plan at that point. So now that person <laughs> has to plan the thing, which you know is going to take several months to come up with the plan. The plan yeah. then needs to get voted on yeah. and pass through all of the levels of government. So that's going to take, I mean, look at how long it took them to get 70, C-74 pushed through when they had a majority. Yep. I mean, we're going to be very thing. close to this deadline. It, at the very I, I least, think we'll be past it. I think we'll I, I do too. Like, there's no it. way they can get it done before that. But even if they were to manage to to bang it all I out know. as quickly, especially as if we're talking an election in between. Yeah, yeah. Well, fingers crossed, we are because they're going to force an election, especially with the new rules they're trying to put in place for how we do elections. But also, I kind of want them to stretch this out for as long as possible. Because if I were a liberal staffer that were trying to suck up to my boss. This is a freebie. They can have this one. <laughs> Just pass another order in council to extend the date. Because we made it uh, all up in the first place. Why not just make up some more? Yeah, if we're already I, in clown prove world. To, pr <laughs> prove to me that we are not actually a country. Just prove to me that we just, it is, yeah, honk, honk. Where's my soundboard? I miss having yeah. my soundboard. Clap louder, <laughs> honk louder. Yeah. yeah, just like. I bet you they don't, though. I bet you they don't I, extend the amnesty. I bet you we never hear about it again. And if the well, federal try, be, if the federal, I would be very surprised happen, if that were the case. Because that, like, that didn't happen in um, uh, '95, right? Like, they kept bumping. I don't know if if you guys yeah. had or remember yeah. having guns in '95. They kept extending the deadline forever, yeah. and it was like, it was fine. Like the deadline just kept. Oh, you've got you've got another year to register. Oh, you've got another year to get a license renewal. Ah, oh, your FAC is still good to buy ammo, and like they just kept bump because nobody. Yeah. Not nobody, a an inconsequential yeah. number of people were being compliant in a timely 
uh, fashion. So they just yeah. kept extending the, uh, I'm going to call it grace period. That's not what it was actually called and it escapes me now, but they kept extending the period of time that you had to be compliant with the law because people just weren't doing it because there was no consequences for not doing it. Well, there's some, some shady stuff in the whole order and council too, like we already know about, but like looking over it recently, somebody pointed out that like the Swiss arms is something that's mentioned in one section, but not in like the amnesty and all of that. <laughs> well, there, there's, I feel like it was, I mean, you mentioned that, ahead, that IBM yeah. was selected for this thing, but at the same time, they don't actually have parliamentary approval to even issue yeah. Uh, issue a contract for this. No. So what has what is the agreement with IBM? Because they, I mean, they can't issue a contract for something that they don't have. Well, uh, they're consulting on it. They're consulting on it. Yeah, when, like so. Again, there's, like, there's. When has that ever stopped them? It's... Yeah. I mean, if they can go and give like a bunch of money for hookers and blow for Gaddafi's kid, so he can party <laughs> on his boat to save a couple of jobs in Quebec, and then shut down hey, the we investigation. Just gave them... And we just gave them another $150 million dollars with million the COVID. Dollars. Yeah. Turn in, a uh, turn in, tune in next week when we talk about how <laughs> SNC Lovely got more tax dollars. <laughs> I didn't put that in this show because I figured we were talking to wait about guns. Uh, but if we're if we're rounded out on the uh, Section 74 revisiting, I do want to talk about another gun thing that happened last week. Bill C-238 failed miserably in the House. 238, uh, for those of you that are not paying attention to C-SPAN, which is probably everyone. CPAC? Uh, which one's ours? CPAC. CPAC. I don't know. It's, I call it the dry fire channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on, a, on, a levels, on a bunch yeah. of levels, Gavin. On a bunch of Yeah. It's for terrible and dry. This is a joke. Yeah. This, is, this is not a... Yeah. We're an entertainment show, guys. <laughs> Uh, that might come back in my section 74 reference hearing <laughs> bill c-238 was an act to amend the criminal code or a bill t- a bill for an act to amend the criminal code in relation to the possession of unlawfully imported firearms so persons to be in possession of a firearm that was allegedly imported unlawfully into canada were required to demonstrate that their pre-trial detention was not justified it also increased the mandatory minimum penalty for possession of smuggled firearms. I believe the numbers are five years for a first offense and seven years for a subsequent but, con- offense, but I might have that backwards by two years. It might have been three and five. I'm pretty sure it was five yeah, and seven. Whatever. Yeah. So you guys saw that. It got voted down. Yep. The yep. internet was very mad about it for like five minutes. Yeah, but I mean, that shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, the liberals are always in favor of irregular uh, migration or whatever they call it. That's an interesting take. I hadn't thought of it that way. How is that surprising to anyone? They're, they, no, it's, I know it's absolute nonsense. Like here you are trying to get tough on guns and gun crime and all of this stuff and say they're that not, these things they, are terrible. I would argue that they're not getting tough on guns. No, they are. And this just this absolutely proves that they're not, but they're posturing that they are and saying that they are yeah. by doing all of this, you know, C-74 and the Order and Council and all of this other stuff that they keep saying they want to get tough on crime and this and that and everything else to do with guns and gun violence and curb gun violence. And they've earmarked millions of dollars and all of that. Where is that money? It hasn't arrived yet. They haven't done anything with it. And here you are. There's a bill going through that actually gets tough on the people actually committing the crimes and bringing the guns across illegally. But then they don't do anything, probably because like that would mean that Bill Blair is ineffective and useless tit. And you know, nobody reason, wants to admit to that. Reason, but like one reason only why they voted against it. And I'll give you guys a guess. Because it wasn't their idea. It was a conservative bill. Well, let's let's look at that. I've got some choice quotes. We'll start with uh, Christina Michaud. Uh, she's a block MP for places I can't pronounce in Quebec. <laughs> the conservative desire to address the issue of access to firearms is legitimate, but is it genuine? Imagine I'm doing this with a French woman's accent. It'd be much better. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> history has shown us otherwise. 
Tougher restrictions should be implemented a long time ago. It's time to take action. Bill C-238 may not look like it would have negative impact on efforts to control firearm usage, but it does not fix the problem. Sadly, it is not the answer we are seeking to a much bigger problem. The government cannot and must not allow itself to believe that this kind of measure counts as taking action on gun control. This measure is sneaky and downright dishonest response to the pleas of thousands of Canadian families who have, oh, sorry, I have editorialized. This measure is sneaky and downright dishonest response to the pleas of thousands of families whose loved ones were collateral victims of shootings that have happened over the years in our community, whether the weapons involved were legally imported or not. Bullshit. So what's the, what's the, like, what's the real answer? The order and okay, counsel? So, like, so even if this doesn't break. solve the problem, why is holding the people that did those things to more accountability a bad thing? Ooh, can I answer this? I know it's not my segment, but. No, no, no yeah, you're, you're part of the show, Wade. You let her rip, I, man. Okay. Get it out. Get it out. So it's cathartic. I'm going, against, I'm going against the grain here. It was a stupid bill. Minimum sentences and reverse onus bail has been struck down every single time by the Supreme Court, so it wouldn't stand. The conservatives knew this. They put it together anyway. They, it was a show for them. They knew the liberals would vote it down. It was a, it, now, I'll bet you within the next week, we all, anybody who's had a conversation with any political party, you're going to get a, some sort of email or phone call and they're going to point to this issue. See, that other guy isn't serious about this issue because of X, either the conservatives. No, and, put yeah, the there's a, there's, in, they are me, playing a game. Yeah. Let me expand on that because I've got another choice quote from a dipper. This is from uh, Rachel <laughs> Blainley in, in BC, uh, North Island, Powell River. This is an offense that I agree should be taken very seriously. In fact, an amendment like this to the criminal code would be something I could discuss and agree to. However, this bill is written in a way that will lead to follow the same path as a similar bill did in 2013, and the Supreme Court of Canada ruled it unconstitutional. I'm very curious as to why the member brought forward le legislation that is unconstitutional when they need to bring forward laws to improve this gap is so very important. I'm not interested in supporting legislation that will be defeated in the Supreme Court of Canada cost a lot of taxpayer dollars and not support safety of communities. Weird. Where was so this lady Wade with the agrees whole with the NDP order and council <laughs> and not being constitutional, wow. right? Like <laughs> she's all about voting this down because it's not constitutional, but where was she voicing her concerns about the order and council not being constitutional? It's, exactly. it's almost like they pick and choose when things are, in, you know, in their favor or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I they mean, do. And does anyone else have a have a take on this before I give you a very novelty take? I'd like to hear yours, Andrew. <laughs> so I have a very novelty take on this because the Twitterverse exploded about this, and Gun Nuts was all a rage because why why would the government vote all of this down when they keep targeting legal law abiding gun owners? And this is such a travesty. And this uh, uh, the CCFR was all mad that police event got another feather in their cap over this. And I'm sitting over here twiddling my thumbs being banned from most of the social media that I need to log into in order to interact with. Yep. I'm over here being mad going, the government can't find something new to charge me with from this because I guarantee that because this is a reverse onus bill, that if I get charged as a legal firearms owner, I will get pretrial detention because I can't, prove that my yep. non-restricted firearms were not imported illegally into this country because right. they're not restricted and I don't have a record of their sale. So I must have illegally smuggled them into the country and I can't prove otherwise. So as a legal firearms owner, I would have to go to pretrial detention because I can't prove I didn't do it. And it's a reverse onus bill. And that is bullshit. And that we didn't get this as a bill is an absolute blessing to gun owners. Welcome yep. to the NDP, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, thank well, I mean, I it's happened before. Yeah. It'll happen it's, again. It's not the first Broken time. Clock yeah. is right twice a day and what the fuck? I love the NDP now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes well, I they're right but for the wrong reasons. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. But now, I mean, what I really... find interesting about this and is that, you know, part of this bill will say, increase the minimum sentencing from uh 10 years minimum to 14 years. And that was the thing they're like, well, we know that you can't get a minimum sentence bill through because the Supreme Court will overturn. But if it's already there already is a minimum sentence and it's 10 years. Yeah. So if if minimum sentences are unconstitutional and can't make their way through Supreme like Supreme Court, why is there already an existing minimum sentence? 
Is that it's a minimum? racist it's, when we do it, or something. it's di- yeah, it's different when they do it or when we do it, or uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like ten years of your life. That's totally fine, but like eleven is unconstitutional. Is there is there what a if, limit to your rights? Like what if yes. they what if they don't yes, make it a minimum a limits to our rights in this country? A minimum sentence, and they just say it's a x number of things and there is no minimum or maximum it's just it's just this yeah like uh that's not a minimum that it's like that the fine is this no matter what which is basically in my opinion how laws should work anyways like if i punch somebody in the face why is it debatable how long i spend time in jail for it it like, depends compared on to, how many people you've punched in the face prior. That I think that's the well. Uh, yeah, but well, like then, then have a like for for a first offense it's X, for a second offense it's X, for a third offense it's X. Like that's the problem with law. Sometimes it's like there's so much. No, it's objectiveness and it, it makes right? it like, very difficult to do kind of the cost benefit analysis too, because yeah, like you don't really just, know what you're going to get. Yeah, but at least so if you it's may like as well a spin the wheel. But what in this law was illegal be- what wasn't illegal before, right? That's my problem. It was illegal to smuggle guns. It's illegal to possess guns, in, you know, without the proper license. All these, we have all these laws. Maybe if they just focused and spent some money on enforcing them, yes. we wouldn't need well, more yeah, laws, like, right? Well, exactly. Well, and that's I mean, like why the- I'm not mad that this failed, because this was a thing that if it had passed, they would use against people like me or other people on this panel, and they uh, wouldn't d- use it against actual criminals, this they was this was definitely the conservatives virtue signaling to their base. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but not in a very good way. But yeah, I, I mean, like if you look <laughs> at how much money was spent mailing out 2.2 million letters to licensed gun owners, telling them that these things are now prohibited, and then mailing out the you know nullification letters to those that had things that were registered. That's millions of dollars in stamps alone let alone the time involved to pay the people to do that, to print the letter, to fold the letter, to lick the envelope and all of that. That's millions upon millions of dollars. Imagine if they had put that money into hiring a team of people that did nothing but look for illegal people crossing the border with guns. Imagine if we just locked up criminals in Toronto. Or, or yeah, like the, <laughs> housing the criminals that are awaiting trial for too long and just putting them here. So like, fine, you're not in jail or whatever, but you're not let go either or something like, or, or there's, you know. Yeah. You know, Imagine like, if the police every, force that met that barbecue guy. Yeah. Like every the time they, they pump money criminals. into, into the police probably. force locally where they go and do, you know, yeah. a raid on a bunch of, you know, gangs every time it turns up you know, illegal guns and drugs every time. And they know that. And they could basically say, if we put X number of dollars into a major urban center, we're going to turn up per capita X number of guns and drugs. And like, it's proven time and time and time again. Like, so that money spent on that, they could have just thrown that all into Toronto or another major center or several centers and gotten more illegal guns off the streets than they will coming Mm. after any of us. So that, that is an option. I would like to know how much money that is and what a wall would cost so that I could make the lake a little bit bigger. Also, probably because more useful if we just got than rid anything of Toronto, they've done. I feel like just yeah. removing Toronto from the equation would really help our... Yeah, well, but I mean, if they actually really... use that money to actually clean up Toronto and get rid of the scumbags, then it wouldn't be so bad and then people might actually want to Water go is a great cleansing force. It's true. We all use it every day to cleanse ourselves physically. I mean, and what you're saying, Andrews, we just need to raise the level of the Great Lakes a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit. That's all I'm. Yeah. <laughs> we. Well, so what you're saying is that we need to make the Great Lakes great again. Just greater, a little greater. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I'm on the escarpment. I could go for that. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is uh, there. There is no border around Toronto, around the GTA. <laughs> Ford comes uh, with yeah i uh, remember when we thought ford was our guy i remember yeah, yeah. that was good that you was remember good. when the yeah. conservative the conservative party was actually conservative i no i've never been alive during that happening and i don't think they were called the conservative party then because the pc thing is yeah. pretty new 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called the Nazi Party, at least according to the liberals. I remember when they said he was like the Canadian uh, Donald Trump, and they were completely right in the worst way possible. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. agreeing with the NDP. I don't like when it happens, but they're yeah. not wrong. Friggin' yeah. guy didn't even release any records on the aliens. <laughs> Let's do. I got one more quick gun thing that's in the same vein, similar vein to this. A Hell's Angel member wins a court challenge over gun license renewal in British Columbia. This is in the Vancouver Sun uh, late last week. BC Supreme Court ruled that I'm probably going to butcher this and I apologize. Gaston Methot? Methot? I'm not sure. I think it's a a second... Gaston Methed. Is, uh... Well, again. <laughs> apologies to anyone. I don't want to mess anyone, with the guys yeah. in 81. So... Yeah. <laughs> He gets a second chance uh, for a hearing at a provincial court to make a case about why he deserves to have his firearms license. And I'm going to put on my future vision hat here. He's had a gun license for like eight years and hasn't committed any felonies. And when he's subject to a daily criminal instant background check. So if the dude owning guns was a problem, it would have been a problem by now. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's already bought do them. A renew- yeah. Yeah. He's what's the date on his renewal? So he, he's had his license from 2012 to 2018 with no incidents. He applied to renew it in March of 2018. Three years later, this is still in court yeah. and he gets to go back to court again to try and get his application approved or moved on to the next step, what have you. So he never had any kind of violent charges on his record i guess yep. well, he's... i'm gonna say that he without incident i'm gonna say that he had no negative interactions with law enforcement during that period that resulted in the suspension or revocation of his license or registration certificates for any firearms that he owned so, then so well, their uh, their their reasoning is that as a organization the hell's angels have a mandate that those that are members are not allowed that not allowed to help cops so if there is ever an issue with him and his firearms if he will not be cooperating with police guess what me neither (laughs) i mean well i mean at that point i don't think the cops are really going to be looking for your cooperation when well, they, exactly. Well, no, when they keep mean, the fucking door in. For example, they don't um, really care, that. do they? <laughs> a, a member of a police force uh, spoke in provincial court about this. Uh, he's apparently a biker expert from the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit, and he testified that because the Hells Angels rules forbid members from cooperating with the police, the example he uses is if a firearm was ever to be stolen, the Hells Angel member would not report the theft to the police. But even then, he's not entirely sure that that's true. But yeah, they have nothing to substantiate that on because it's not like they've got the the employee manual for the Hell's Angel that they can put into evidence. Be a lot yeah. cooler if they did. I'd probably I buy a copy for reference. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, they tried to get it, but none of the guys would give it to them because they're not allowed to cooperate with police. <laughs> yeah. So that's which is proof. kind of a nonsense argument because you're not compelled <laughs> to cooperate with law enforcement in this country unless you've been charged with an offense. Even then, you don't have to cooperate. It just may or may no, not be used against you. You, you have but to. That, that's what I mean by compelled. So yeah. you you are not compelled to speak to law enforcement, but if you elect to not do it, that may reflect negatively in your yeah. sentencing or trial hearings is a chance i suppose you take but i mean also if you run with an outlaw motorcycle club there are probably other chances you're taking in life well absolutely but i mean like if you look at your your you know your pal application at no point does it say who do you associate with like it gives you references and you know all that sleeps with that's different but but can i also ask this question guys like why is the hell's angels member applying for a firearms license Probably because he likes riding motorcycles and wants to shoot guns. I mean, yeah. that's what I would do. I mean, I mean don't, don't I know don't it's they, like aren't they really not caring about that and have guns anyway? Well, but I obviously really this guy's... too much Sons of Anarchy. But obviously, this guy is <laughs> maybe I've goes against never the grain. Show, but I just 
you going know, on maybe their reputation. That's all. It maybe goes against the grain and and all of that. But like, yeah. maybe this is the one member that's law abiding. The fact that he's actually applying for a license probably shows that he's willing to at least jump through a few legal hoops and be <sighs> compliant. I mean, he's already got a motorcycle license. I'm I'm sure of, and they didn't say that they have to take that away because he, you know, I'm sorry, associates with the biker gang. Their names. I mean, that's just as the Hell's Angels. Yeah, is but, like I don't know if you're a Hell's Angel. Do you apply well, for a fire? Do you ask permission for things? I know, there's a one. lot of stereotypes around how motorcycle right. clubs, particularly outlaw motorcycle right. clubs, function because not, of not everyone at a golf club golfs. Some some people are just there for a social <laughs> membership. Exactly, right. and that's, I mean, that's my thing. I, I think there's a okay, lot of so we're equating golf. That, we're equating golf membership to the Hell's Angels. Right, but does everybody that rides a motorcycle belong to a law motorcycle club? No, but if you're if you're patched up, I mean, come on. It, so no I'd say so I get you're saying you can and, ask them. And, and I definitely up, don't. You're want... not somebody that rides a a motorcycle on Sunday. It's a little bit different. I, I, I get what you're saying. It's I definitely don't club. want the yeah. like the the criminal aspect of the Hell's Angels being associated with with pal holders. That does that does us no good. I don't want criminals using firearms in this country uh, for all the reasons that that most people would agree with that. But at the same yeah. time, um, I don't like seeing anybody's rights being removed without cause. Yeah. And, exactly. and this guy has committed no crimes. He's been nonviolent. He has done nothing. Yeah. Um, to to justify him not getting this license, and so it it is definitely a bit of a uh, absolutely it's a bit of a gray area here. So I, I think this... like it, it it setting the precedent that association is enough reason to bar you means that like say you're a uh, a law abiding person, but is a member of a popular group these days, the Proud Boys. Uh, that's enough reason uh, to let's be careful with calling them popular. That's enough that's, reason. That's, to, like. yeah, it, that's enough reason. You're a member of that. You wear their polo shirts with the little chicken on it. Uh, you you can't own a gun because uh, you're a member of that. Is that fair? Yeah. You that, that's kind of crime. You've that. never it's, been it's... accused of a crime, but because you're associated with this organization that people view as bad, and a few members have done some bad things, you can't own a gun, despite the fact you've committed no crime. That's not yeah, that's, that's I mean, kind of my enough. point is that like, enough, just but... because there are criminals in outlaw motorcycle clubs doesn't mean that everyone in an outlaw motorcycle club is a criminal. And uh, if they were, would they yeah. not have been rounded up and gone to jail by now? Like this guy didn't yeah. get caught doing anything illegal for but, five years. And yeah, and I understand that, what you guys are saying, but to Marty's point, it's about the optics of things. It's sure, like, I agree, but we also, don't know. My, my point is their point. I was just sure, going, Wade, it's, it's a, Wade's it's trying to. It's a slippery slope. Uh, yeah, well, Wade's trying to like prove a point uh, amongst the court of law. <laughs> I, I mean, and, do you, so you want to look guy. like? Do you want to look like a? Uh, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but do you want to look like a criminal entity when you're trying to no, uh, defend your? You right? the Here's the thing, like, though: like, you got to look like a criminal in, entity. In the context of today, everyone would say, "Like, well, if this person's a Nazi, you're not going to give them a gun." And people would be on board with that. And then here we are two years later when every single person is a Nazi if they disagree with anything. Yeah. And, and if they don't step in line, then they you call everybody to, a Nazi. You and have it's, to uphold that, it's the that law. kind of it's that kind of thing that you have to be very careful of by saying, Well, you know, sure, this group based on considerations, like, no, we have laws in place. They say this. If the person has meets this this qualifications, then they're allowed to have these licenses. As soon as you start doing interpretation of who should and who shouldn't, it's a slippery slope. Yep. And there. all of a sudden, everybody becomes a hell's angel and everyone is a Nazi and everyone is yep. whatever group they decide to call them to justify pushing their agenda. Well, well that's, that's, that's why we have like... to have separation from things like that because. But that's the problem I mean, is you, we you don't, can't because I, I, I it's either you're law abiding or you're not. Group. Sorry, Gavin, I don't want to be part yeah. of a group that strikes fear in the general, general populace because. We're never You're a gun yeah. owner too late. No, I know, but I mean, not really. I mean, come on, we're not that 
people aren't scared of me because I'm a sports shooter or a hunter or whatever. They don't but think like, of you as that. They think but, of you as a gun owner. You, but they don't look at me like I'm a hell's angel. Do you really think it doesn't it's matter that, though? It's, it's that bad? Like, come on. I, I, I'm with you. I don't, I'm, I am the last person that wants criminals to have guns. However, this guy is not a criminal. The, the charter oh, and everything in Canada. Oh, wait, does that work? Well, I mean, he hasn't been convicted of a crime, so technically he's not a criminal. The charter says that you are free from association and stuff like that. So we have to uphold the charter. So until this guy is convicted of a crime, he has every right, like everyone else that is not convicted of a crime, to own guns. If he was actually a criminal, he probably wouldn't be applying for his pal and he would just own the gun illegally. So the fact that he's actually even going through this process demonstrates that he goes against the grain and at least the stereotype that all members of the Hells Angels are not law abiding. I My think also you, what it demonstrates to me is the guy's not smart because I mean, if, if you're like going to have that patch on your back and then you're going to go walk into a, a place and you're going to ask for a legal firearms license and you're going to expect to be like treated like a normal citizen. So can I ask, maybe this is more up, up your alley. I don't want to do, dawdle on this too much longer because it is getting on, but what if the guy likes to hunt and also rides his bike and run hookers and sell coke and other things like should he go out and start poaching or should he pay for game tags and like shoot bambi's mom once a year he shouldn't be doing any of it because he's a criminal right but but okay. if he hasn't Our been criminals convicted. not able to go or, okay so he's not a criminal in this case because he's not been convicted sure putting that aside if he has some other illicit form of making a living or he does some other act that is not lawful should that mean he just does everything illegally should he start poaching no no so in order to go but he hunting, also doesn't he get a, a hunting pal. license or a pal exactly he, lost, sorry, he well, loses the oh, right to hunt once exactly. he's a criminal like well, at least he loses well, the right to hunt start with a fire deciding to go outside the box then you lose the privilege to but have the things though. that we have the right for but he hasn't gone outside the box no, at but least we're talking about andrew's, to say andrew's like, hypothetical where he's running like, hookers yeah. and, and selling coke that is a criminal yeah but he hasn't been convicted of running hookers or selling coke. But the dude is running with this kind of stuff, though. It's like, yeah. but that's my that's my point. If he's not been convicted of, it doesn't of matter. Campaign, then then does I can't matter. assume that he is. I'm not but, assuming okay. that this guy so, is running. Your hypothetical of someone that's that's you know okay that so, is so, a criminal. Then yes, if they've if they've been charged with those crimes, then they don't get to hunt. I I okay, the fire. And then, I, and then so let's talk about this... straw purchasing. We're talking no, about stop no, 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 no. You can't no, do I'm that. You can't do that because that could Why be anybody. Why can't we talk about that? Because like, if this guy's like, and it's this guy's show, like and that's raised in a family where the Hell's Angels are, and then he's trying to be legit, and he gets a a, a gun uh, license. You telling me that people around him aren't going to be like, hey, what's man. To, what's to stop a Hell's Angel from coming up to you and saying, hey, Brian, I know you have a gun license. Here's because a shit I don't ton of money. associate with them. I but, don't you're not a member of the club, but that doesn't mean that you don't know them. So I don't know. I mean, any. if we're going to have the slippery slope <laughs> argument, like you might know one yeah, or okay. like, so let me try this again. because I, I don't think I phrased like this very clearly the first time. So if I am a person who is knowingly breaking the laws, but has not yet been caught, should I just start breaking every law? If I start pipping people out, but I've not been convicted of being a pimp and I start running drugs, but I've not been convicted or even been alleged of being a drug dealer or distributor, should I just start poaching and speeding and kidnapping and raping and doing all of these other illegal things? Well, no, because I think it's no, more and that's wrong. my point. So as long First as I off, haven't been convicted, but they're going to do it anyway. So you're saying I should just go out and start poaching animals because okay. I don't, I do other illegal okay, things. Let me, go, ahead, go ahead and do I it and that, face the consequence. So the challenge I think though, is with freedom and rights and stuff like that is, from time okay. to time, we're going to bump up against these kind of things that make us a little uncomfortable. Exactly. Like, but but we have to be okay with that, right? We have yeah. to not can agree I, with the speech that's, a, that, we, the, that we Can defend. I ask a question? Guys, if you guys found somebody poaching or shooting illegally and causing uh, friction okay. for our, our sport and the cause we're trying to uh, go for right now, okay. you wouldn't have a problem with this shit? I'd be pissed off. I'd be pissed yeah, okay. off. Let me put it to you this way, Brian. 
we all know that there are pedophiles out there that have really gross things on their cell phones, right? And these people have not been caught yet. Okay. Right? We, that, that's a thing that exists. So we know that if the government went through our cell phones without us knowing, they would catch these people. Does that mean that they have the right to go through your cell phone? Yes, I would let them do that to catch pedophiles. Yes. I'm sorry. I would not. I absolutely I disagree not. with you. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, my rights to privacy. Yeah. Well, I really don't have anything. My individual hide. rights trump the really rights of society. that bad. But like, I understand what you're talking about, Gavin, but like, we're never going to get same, to that. It's, never it's the same like thing, that. though. It's the same thing. We this guy has committed no crime. Therefore, being associated with even an outlaw motorcycle club is not enough reason to deny him because that is not a stipulation of having a pal. If they want to change that and have association be something that you're then, but Can then I that ask? goes and it's a slippery slope. So if you're hanging out at the gun range and you hang out with somebody that gets arrested for being a domestic terrorist, then you associate with them. And then therefore that's a reason to deny you of having your pal because you associated with that person, even though you didn't know. That's the problem, and that's the slippery slope, and that's how that yeah, goes. Ben, so come on, your man. rights would be infringed, even though you did nothing wrong. That's the problem. Yeah, and and to say that we are not close to the to the government searching through our cell phones, we are very close to the government searching through our cell phones. Well, you know what, Marty? Then why don't we just throw them in the fucking river? I'm I'm done with them. Like that's, if it, if it, that if is a it, very uh, reasonable decision to make yeah. that's why marty that uses bad, smoke signals for his bad, internet I, I don't want to have anything to do with it but i mean gavin what i what i'm trying to say is i get what you guys are saying is but you're 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 muddying the waters okay i i don't think we are though no I you mean, are we have a principled what I'm trying stand to say is what i'm trying to say is that i personally can see evil when it exists and like even though um what you guys are trying to say oh protect this no fuck that shit if somebody's evil they don't deserve it and okay. personally I, but so, this, personally i would not have evil. The government if the de government declares that all white men are domestic terrorists you've now forfeited all your rights and you get rounded up and go to jail is that an acceptable outcome yeah, all white like, men are domestic terrorists. When's that going to happen? Ever? Uh, as soon as everybody that disagrees Tuesday, with the government right online is a Nazi. Now. We're they, we're this is happening on, right guys. now. You're you can a little see. Crazy now. That's a little ridiculous. No, I'm. The, no, you can the see. U.S. Department of Justice right put out Look a report at, like three weeks ago saying that the largest threat to uh, to domestic well-being in the United States is white right a uh, white right wing extremism. In a country that is a majority, 60% white country, white people are the biggest threat to their own national safety. How far yeah. away are we from that in Canada? I think Months, yeah. years. I think it's, just, we're uh, not far behind. Yeah, right. I, but I mean, come on, guys. So if there's that's, 60% of us that know the right thing, and then... Wade made the most appropriate reference. Thing, you you can, only can, have to defend to free speech balance, when right? you disagree with it. Sorry, say that again, Marty. It was a point that Wade made earlier. You only need to defend free speech when you disagree with it. Yep. Free speech only needs to be defended when you only the time you need to step up and defend free speech is if, if somebody's saying something that you absolutely disagree with. Yep. And that's the most important time to do it because that shows that you're a principled stand and say, I absolutely hate what this person is saying, but I will defend their right to say it because that is far more important than anything else. And, and this what? is one of those cases. Like we agree with you. We don't want to be associated with, with hell's angels. We don't want to be giving yeah. firearms to criminals. If this guy is a criminal, uh, but the problem is but he's not it, a criminal. It's a slippery slope. At this point, he has every right to own a firearm. Therefore I, I, I want him to have, be able to get the firearm. He should be able to exercise that right. Just like anybody else that has, made it through life without with you know without committing yeah. any crime without you know as a as an an otherwise proven honest citizen um okay, he has a right enough. to fire fair enough right, but you let's know leave what? that there i think next he next should have month. like something on his on his uh re or like on his file that flags him a little bit because i mean I, I'm he does. Sure he, they know I'm he's sure a he hell's does. angel they're already watching him come on yeah. 
I'm sure he does. The police are looking out for him. And the minute that he gets a charge from the police, they come and take his firearms. Like yeah. that, the same thing that we all have. But you anyway, guys understand, I, like, month, I agree with what you month. guys are saying. I really agree with what you're saying, but you got to understand where I think it, it is. It's kind of muddy there. It's a little muddy. <laughs> Next month, book club, Ender's Game. If you haven't started reading yet, you got, uh, what do we got? Like three more weeks? Yeah, something like that. It, and it's, a, it's a quick read, too. It's, it's a, a good one. Book. It's, it's a, a good, good one. one. Yeah. So tune in uh, last Monday of the month when we're going to do book and rifle club because that's what we do. Also, if you're buying stuff on Amazon, use our affiliate links so that we get some commission. More rifle, um, less book. Well, I mean, maybe we need to do that too. <laughs> we'll go around the uh, we'll go around the thing here. We'll go clockwise again and ask people where they can find them. Actually, you know what? Um, courtesy to Wade as a first time panelist, Wade. If people want to get in touch with you, do you want to remind everybody where this is the GoFundMe? Where's the email? If they want absolutely. to reach you, is there a place they can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So uh, if you have a couple of shekels you can spare uh, for this Section 74 appeal, um, that would be great. Uh, go to GoFundMe, type in S74 appeal. It'll come right up. There's that or obviously the show links here and watch for socials. Um, if you are interested in filing a Section 74 uh, re application now and you're not sure what to do or you want some help or if you've done it and you're looking just for some support somewhere, wherever you are, send an email to s74process at gmail.com and we'll figure out how to reach out to you. Thanks, guys, for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. And I mean, yeah, thanks for coming you away. are always welcome back. I, yeah. I, it is it is kind of an open invite to anyone on the internet that if you if you can get on Zoom, you can get on the podcast. <laughs> and I haven't kicked yeah. anyone off yet. It's cathartic, man. You get to you get to let it all out. Yeah. We've had we've had some people yeah. rage quit. We've had some people not come back, but we've I've I've yet to actually <laughs> ban anyone. Yeah. We miss you, Trevor. Well, I wasn't really thinking about Trevor, but all right. Uh, let's go around again. Brian, where can everybody find you? Uh, you guys can find me at any Ragnarok tactical event, or you can contact the show's feedback if you need to get mad at me about anything I said. All right. And I want to see if Brian's done his homework. Is he on the ball? There's a Ragnarok tactical course coming up. What is it? Where is it? When is it? How do they register for it? Oh, geez. Um, I know it's, <laughs> I know it's coming up, not this weekend, but the following weekend. And it's a land nav course. Close. And it's not, it's it, very close. The weekend February, after that. February 20 and 21st in Mississauga, we are doing a land nav course. If you want to register, there's a few spots left. Go on the website and uh, send me your money and we'll get you the joining instructions and you can come hang yeah. out with the crew and we'll play with maps and compasses and you may or may and, not learn something. And I'll probably give you a beer after the course, guaranteed. So <laughs> probably guaranteed. <laughs> you will also get a very, very exclusive morale patch. Yes. That is only available if you take the class. So send your money to Wade first. Yes. And then if you've got money left, <laughs> sign up for the few remaining spots in the class. Yeah. It'll be fun. It might be balls cold. It might not dress appropriately. One day classroom or online. If the Corona's is still a thing, the second day will be in the field outside, dress warm, social distancing. Put your lawn johns on, folks. Yeah. All right, Marty, where can everybody find the show? Uh, you can visit feedback. Uh, podcast.com slash feedback or email at feedback at Canadian Patriot podcast.com all right gavin uh have you got anything new and exciting going on you want to share um i mean i'll be at this sweet ragnarok tactical class coming up and uh no not really you can find me on uh on the instagram urbex gta all one not even going to mention your super cool new youtube celebrity that you were hanging well out with. i mean yeah i guess i could give tj a little shout out because he's a decent guy uh my boy tj uh kennedy tactical I started a new YouTube page, uh, Bearded and Bladed. Check it out. I went and shot some guns with him and drank some mead, and it blew up in his face, and he told some funny stories. <laughs> he definitely had the white one. Yeah, white it was mouth. definitely a white one, I think, <laughs> all up in the face. Yeah, I, I had the same thing happen to me another day. I hate to say it, but yeah, Kurz was definitely right on, on at least the 
the white <laughs> bottle of mead. The rest of it was totally fine and good to go. But that one probably could have sat a little while longer. Yeah, well, live may or may not be bottle fermenting. It's all good though. <laughs> it's fine. It's just carbonated. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's like a so. hand grenade of mead. It gets you some drunk, boys. That's, that's all I that, know. That's, yeah. <laughs> And confirm. <laughs> and confirm. I don't. I don't have anything else that I don't think we've already touched on. Be a Patreon. Send us email feedback. Get on the show if you want to. I'm hesitant to put this in here, but I think we're gonna do a Discord. So if you want the link to the Discord, go in the show notes because I don't know how to do that yet, and I'm working on it. So somebody set up a Discord for us. We're gonna give that a try. It'll be in the show notes by the time you hear this. Go on the website and look it up and let us know if that's a thing you want. Or email us and tell me why you don't want to use Discord, because maybe it's a bad idea. I have to apologize to Rod Giltaka. He did not respond to my Discord friend request, so he was not allowed on the show tonight. Come on, dude. Yep. I know he saw it. It's marked red. He's leaving me on red, guys. <laughs> For all you listeners out there in podcast land, I'd like to remind you that you are the true north, strong and free. Yeah, guys, that was fun.